it you can you can see it it's almost as if she's reliving it you know she's talking and respectfully so the things she's talking about are extremely serious she's talking about having to deal with him killing himself so it's like again at the age she was at 21 like that's obviously a lot for someone to process and there's nothing wrong with that but the reality is that you know at least for me i can sense that it's still something that she's dealing with you know it's not now, complete, just... that's something that I, I believe that you've completely healed from and I, i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that healing can take as much time as you need to take you know what i mean it's it, that's up to you you get what i'm saying but i don't think if someone is to notice that you're not fully healed from it i don't think that's wrong either yes cloud what i wanted to say to you is um, i'm glad that you said that and it's true it's gonna always hurt me my cousins they passed in a car accident same car accident every time of year even if and it didn't hurt i was younger and it was so much more long ago but you're not gonna see me speak about it with that type of pain um i do feel like um i do need to heal more from it i feel like i've healed a great deal um the reason why i was getting even more emotional while talking to darwin and this has nothing to do with your highness. That's that's my the ex, my child's father. It has to do with so when y'all said that women had ulterior motives, like we wanted to get some from the day and it Somewhere. jumped to money. I don't know if I'm wrong or I would I went the opposite <laughs> direction. I thought y'all were talking about sex. <laughs> so uh <laughs> I, I do. Th I, I'm just trying to bring up the question. Do women go on dates just to get sex? That would be a yes. That's that's all I wanted to say. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Chanel. I just wanted to support Di a little bit on the comment about her not being able to move on because she's still talking about something that happened 11 years ago. I am a type of person that... Um, I share a lot of my personal life with y'all just so you guys can understand my thought process when I respond to some of these things. And that's how I see Di. She talks about her past situation, which is all she knows is what she knows, so that she can help you understand where she's coming from. So I don't think it's that she can't move on. And I'm just using myself for an example. because I think I went back to my marriage multiple times with y'all, but that don't mean I haven't moved on. It's just these are lessons that I've learned from, and those are things that she's learned from. So, so. I, don't, I don't think speaking about it. I don't think speaking about it is what gives off that impression. I think it's that um, and and I and I mean this with no offense to die, but I mean, every time that she brings it up on the podcast, she she does become emotional, and a lot of times she you can hear that she's coming to tears, and it's like I I, I can understand death because like for example, I've lost my father. I brought up my father multiple times on the podcast, and. It, it never brings me to tears because I've dealt with those emotions and I've processed them. And so now I can have a conversation as, as I'm talking, you know, as if I'm talking about anything that happened today. So I think the part that Darwin's bringing attention to is that, you know, when she does bring it up, she does get it. You can, you can see it. It's almost as if she's reliving it. You know, she's talking and respectfully. So the things she's talking about are extremely serious. She's talking about having to deal with, him killing himself so it's like again at the age she was at 21 like that's obviously a lot for someone to process and there's nothing wrong with that but the reality is that you know at least for me i can sense that it's still something that she's dealing with you know it's not now, just... that's something that i i believe that you've completely healed from and I, i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that healing can take as much time as you need to take you know what i mean it's it, that's up to you you get what i'm saying but i don't think if someone is to notice that you're not fully healed from it i don't think that's wrong either Yes, Cloud, what I wanted to say to you is um, I'm glad that you said that, and it's true. It's going to always hurt me. My cousins, they passed in a car accident, same car accident, every time of year, even if, and it didn't hurt. I was younger, and it was so much more long ago, but you're not going to see me speak about it with that type of pain. Um, I do feel like... Um, I do need to heal more from it. I feel like I've healed a great deal. Um, the reason why I was getting even more emotional while talking to Darwin... And this has nothing to do with your highness. That's that's my the ex, my child's father. It has to do with, okay, I was a straight A student, graduated high school at 16, doing everything right. When that situation happened, I started doing everything wrong. Just like it, my brain just couldn't process how to do the right thing. That's what trauma does. And people judge me for it. They told me to just get over it. They told me it happened so many years ago. The first two years, let me tell you what I did, Cloud. I went to go get my own apartment. 
me and my baby was good. I paid for all my bills. I was like, you know what? I just got to work harder. You know, I can't get emotional. I got a baby to live for. I got to do this. That caused me to suppress. And you know, we as emo women, we're emotional. That's who we are. We're emotional creatures. So I suppressed those feelings of losing mm -hmm. him for two years. So that put me back sure. on healing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So sometimes when people talk about the situation, they're like, oh, you just need to get over it. You need to do this. It's like... When a man dedicate a man, a man dedicates himself to a woman, a woman dedicates herself to him. So for my life, I saw my life up under him. I was under, under his following, under his lead, mm -hmm. like a man leads. I was following him. And that was the first man I've ever followed. You know what I'm saying? And you Not that. even my dad. You know what I'm saying? So that situation okay. in itself has shaped my life. And it has hurt me. What makes me very emotional is when mm -hmm. people seem to not, like, seem to categorize me with other women because of mm -hmm. my circumstances, if that make any sense. It's like, I'm telling you how I think. Even earlier when I was talking, he was like, women don't do that. And I'm like, I do because I had a guy in my life who I was dating since mm -hmm. I was 13 or 14 put me on the game, telling me how niggas think. Telling me how niggas feel, telling me about his emotions, his thought process. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. yeah, it did hurt a little bit. And I do know I have more healing to go through. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I talk about him a lot. And when I have the re when I do talk about him, I do feel like I have to go back to that emotion so I can show y'all what I'm saying is real. You know what I'm saying? Like, as you see, as I'm talking to you, I can talk about it. I'm not as emotional, but I'm not going to lie. He triggered me from people in my past who didn't know how to deal with me. It made me almost hate the black community for a minute because they was like, you don't got your daughter like the rest of us do. Why you ain't got your daughter? You ain't, you, why you dress like that? Why your hair look like that? Why you ain't working? Mm -hmm. I was going through trauma, like, and you categorizing me because of where I am at in life. So yeah, that's the part that. What did they categorize you? Like Hold on, I do want to bring up. I, I do want to bring up something now, uh, because and it's not just keeping it on you, but I'm just trying to tie this back in to a lot of situations that people uh, go through now, um, and when it comes to dating and trauma. Um, I, I did hear you say that you was healed, and then you said that you was healing. I heard that like twice. So then I heard you was in relationships. So my question would be is, it, like, is it possible to be with somebody while you're still healing? Or should you even be in a relationship with somebody while you're still healing? If you think about even when people go through divorce, right? Um, people be like, man, if I can, I wish I can get that person back. But if you get that person back, you're getting a whole nother version of them. It's, it will never, it will probably never be the same. So what version is he getting from you? And then once you heal, what does that look like after you heal? Are you going to even be looking at the relationship the same? Because uh -huh. if you're saying that you're dating somebody that's younger and it kind of ties back into what Darwin said, when you think about vetting, like, are you even properly vetting somebody? Right? Because if you got to coach him up and is he the right person for you? Or is he, or, or are you vulnerable and he's just convenient right now to kind of satisfy uh, what you need? Because once you get healed, uh, it, it, so to answer or are you trying to turn somebody new to into the your one question, you lost? Lapeef, to answer your question, I'm not healed. I am healing. The reason why I say healed is, is because at first I couldn't analyze myself and take accountability. Um, you're right. The first, the reason why I didn't want to go to details about my relationship because how y'all talk about men on the podcast and women who do certain things, it, it, I didn't want to bring it up. But one thing about me, I'm fully transparent. So since you asked, I'll tell you. The first three, four years, I did go through a lot. I did have to build him up. I did have to teach him spiritual awareness. I did have to help him build a relationship with God. I couldn't be concerned about who he was fucking, when he was fucking, and why he was fucking. I was strictly concerned on saving this man's life. Because I did that and because I put that work into him, now it's my turn to listen to him. But because I've been through so much stuff in the past, it was hard for me to trust where he's leading me. But lately, 
for the past year and a half, he has been leading awesomely. But because I've been so hurt, I didn't know how to forgive him. Now, over the summer, I took a break and he thought I was going to be fucking, which I wasn't. But I took a break to myself to get back to know myself, to get to know my morals, my standards, my values. Because in the beginning, I had to compromise them in order for him to heal, in order for him to realize you're not broke. You're not this. You're not that. So you're right. And, um... I never thought that I could fall in love twice. Every time I fell off with a guy real, 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 real bad. And that's why I said, all glory be to God. I feel like he's going to use me as an example. I can't wait to use our relationship as a success um, story. But um, yeah, I had to do it first. I was older than him. So he trusted the information that I had. He trusted just me in general. He was vulnerable with me. I didn't I didn't throw stuff in his face. I never, I didn't do the things that y'all say most women do and the reason why they can't gain trust from men. And now he's doing the same for me, even though that I, I have been emotionally neglecting him, sexually neglecting him, and I've been doing things. He's like, no, bro, I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. I understand that you hurt, but just understand I got your back. I got your back. I, got I hate to break back. it to you. So right now we're, uh, honestly, right now we're kind of dating. Um, but, um, he's moving at my pace. It's been a year and a half. We haven't had sex or anything like that. He's moving at my pace. <laughs> he's honest with me about the women he's dating. Um, he's honest with me about what he's doing. I'm okay with what he's doing because I understand I am not in a emotionally space to be giving him sex. And so he's getting not somewhere. I need momentary. to get to where I need to be first. So, so he's getting somewhere momentarily. What do you mean? I'm, let me just break it to you. This dude that you with, and I don't know if anybody uh, don't want to say it because they don't want to cause more hurt. No, I don't. I, I didn't, I didn't take dude, my situation for you to give an opinion. I was actually honestly talking to the peef about uh, why well, I, I mean, think the we, way I think. Well, well you, gotta, you gotta understand, we all on the panel. We, yeah, that's true. We're okay. gonna give our input. <laughs> I'm sorry, you triggered me early. I don't like yeah, you right uh, here. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, because we do gotta get everybody else involved, man. I know we just. I was just gonna say one last thing. Okay. The guy, the guy you with, he's he's exploiting you. He's taking advantage of so. your youth and your time. I don't believe so, but we could go to the next. Okay. Okay.